Have you or a loved one been suffering from white guilt and want to right the wrongs of the past, but maybe you're just afraid that you won't be accepted or that your whiteness draws skepticism due to the historical wrongdoings of your predecessors under the guise of humanitarian efforts? Maybe you know someone who is struggling with their identity in a cultural adoption disaster that left them lame and outcasted only to suffer in silence from the debilitating disease of culture vulturia. You are not alone. Our scientists at Cracker Speck and Piccaninny can help. Here at Cracker Speck and Piccaninny, we have developed a wide range of products that can help assist in any cultural transition allowing you to infiltrate the walls that do not yet know they need infiltrating. We are the agents of change. All change needs is a chance. So give yourself that chance. Call today, just like I did once upon a time. Cracker Speck and Piccaninny, because your life is now my life. Be easy. My nigger. God damn it. Shit. Keep forgetting. Don't pronounce the R. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to another episode of the Intrigue Dynamite Show. And yes, I'm your host, Intrigue Dynamite. On this channel, we like to educate, entertain, analyze, and examine specific subject matters. And sometimes we get a little ratchet. I appreciate all the feedback and, and, and the love that I'm getting for the videos. Now, it takes me a while, because I'm a one-man show, so I'm, I'm gonna try to get at least three videos out a week because it takes me like two days and I go hard. I'm usually working on those videos. So, hey, don't be, don't be shy. Hey, if you like the video, you like the channel, support the channel. You know, you can hit the cash app up if you like. Do it! Right, I'm not gonna be mad at you. Just do it! Matter of fact, I'll appreciate you, cause uh, I'm working my behind off here. You can do it! So listen, without further ado, we're gonna get into this. Seem like black society, black culture, no matter where you go, if it's foundational black Americans, if it's our extended family in the diaspora. It seems as though people are enthralled. They are, they are fascinated with it, no matter which aspect of it that, it, that, uh, that black society portrays. It seems as though there's a lot of people that love it so much, it starts with hip hop, they want to get into hip hop, the different types of music, even fashion. And we're starting to see hair. It's like, hmm, okay. But what does it say about black society when someone goes so far as to just claim to be you? Yeah, I'm, I'm you now. This is why it is, it, it is very important to create hard boundary lines pertaining to culture and lineage and your bloodline. Otherwise, anyone can call themselves black. You ain't black. The rise of the trans Negro. What happens when we fail to identify ourselves? What happens when we neglect to dig the trench and fill the moat, and man the parapet with archers at the ready to protect that which was entrusted to us, that which not only defined our ancestors, but guided them? guided them from losing themselves while losing the land they once called home. That which is inextricable to our very being. That which is the claw that we have been cut from. That which is our culture, our history, our lineage, our bloodline. That which makes us a unique people. What happens? Chaos. Chaos. I made a million by the time I was ten. I wrote a love song to a rat named Ben. Look me in the face and tell me if you're you just 
described yourself back then as a beautiful girl. So if you did a, if you were a beautiful girl, why do this? So this big blimp breasted Bonkisha wannabe set out to do all sorts of injections in herself and is calling herself a black woman. Like the boys, like their brand new car. They love to work on it and if they see, wow, nice results, let's find this piece and this piece. But and not so only my skin color changed, also in meanwhile also I've realized that my eye color has changed, my eyebrow color has changed, and also my regrowing hairs are more black and more darker and going curly. This has changed, Martina, has come around because of these tanning injections. And it was one of your surgeons that recommended that you should use these tanning injections because you weren't getting the, the deep tan that you wanted just by going out into the sun. Okay. There were three injections in January and nothing else, only a little bit sun. And now I'm really dark. So, that, so what, this has happened after three injections. The, the one controversial aspect here, because you know, we interview people all the time who want to change their appearance, people who see their uh, bodies as ongoing artwork, all well and good, that's absolutely fine. But you have stepped in, into the realms of controversy by saying that you now identify as black. I identify as a black woman. Now, anyone who takes up the task to go out and make a caricature of black woman, women or, or, or that that makes anyone who goes and makes the effort to try and have an image it begs the question who in the hell were you looking at to get this picture it's very telling when someone goes and puts a costume on to look like you it goes to say this is the image that i have of black people you can see the fingernails she got these long fingers Listen, sisters, y'all are some of the most beautiful women on earth. Don't make it this easy. Now, here's, here's the interesting thing. This woman is in America. You see right there, Studio USA. Let me tell you something. Now, look, black people are very open people. I'm using this term loosely. It's not that I, I don't, I don't want to lop everyone in the same Bold. But I have noticed throughout the different black cultures that there seems to be an openness and a welcoming tradition. So much so that we have a tendency to not vet the people that are coming around. And the next thing you know, they have the land and you have your hand out begging for it back. This is why culture needs to be defined. Bloodlines need to be defined. Birth rights need to be defined. Specific and hard boundary lines that cannot be infiltrated. We've seen all throughout black society here in America, all efforts for those who descended from the bloodline of the indigenous people to, to this land and to those who were enslaved. Forget it. Just forget it. I wish Bill Clinton was here, so I would apologize to him for you black folks. You, now, I mean, see, you black folks tricked him. You went in that big old black pot and said, here, white boy, you black. What kind of fool is you? Huh? What kind of fool is you? I have a son, a chiropractor now, Christian. He's eight years old, he came to me crying. Dad, my brothers and sisters is laughing at me. I said, why? He said, well, I, I, I built me one of these castles, and I make like it's my house. Do you see anything wrong with that? I said, no, there's nothing wrong with that until you try to start using it as your address. So I tell Bill Clinton, ain't nothing wrong with being black as long as you're playing. <laughs> but when you try to use it as your address. Now, you can't tell by looking at me, but I'm a black man. Bruh. Was it my dancing rhythm that gave it away?
What binds us is not skin. We are not bound by that. Here you have people calling themselves black, black, I'm black, I'm black. Oh, we need to separate ourselves so far. We need to create hard boundary lines that makes it impossible for them to even penetrate. We have to stop being welcoming to everyone. That's how you lose. That's how your culture is taken. And there are those who feel entitled to it. It's not skin that makes you black. Well, technically, yeah. Your skin can make you black. But you'll never be one of us. And even those who are naturally born black, some of them are not one of us. And one of us, what am I talking about? The code. I'll put it to you this way as an example. Take a glass of water and a glass of vinegar. Both of them look alike. The code is baking soda. The agenda is the human body. The human body needs water to keep going. It needs to stay hydrated, keep going. So we have to feed that agenda. The soldiers that are with that are the water because we keep it going. We are determined to make sure that this agenda this body, this sense of duty that was instilled to us from our ancestors is sought out to completion. The code is baking soda. You test it by the code. The glass of water, it sinks down to the bottom. It holds on to that code. But the vinegar, it vomits it back up. It can never, ever accept the code. Looks like you, but it ain't one of you. It is the code that binds us. It is our differences that define us. And it is division that determines us.